Here is a 2024 Range Rover Velar Dynamic HSE in the new Veracine Blue. We get a refresh on the exterior and in the interior. The HSE was new for last year, which gives you the air suspension standard, so you don't have to option it. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides, and with the air suspension, you're getting nearly two inches more fording through water at nearly 23 inches, and clearance can go up to 9.9 .9 inches. LED headlights and day time runnings this has been refreshed they are auto leveling with an active grill shutter the grill was reworked range rover badging and what i like is the color combo these colors are all new so the side pieces right here on the air vents on top of the hood by the range rover on the door and range rover doesn't stop there it takes it all the way to the rear it puts a touch where the exhaust would normally be. I like that they've kept a more minimalistic look and stayed to the heritage of the Range Rover and optioning the P400, you get a 3.0 liter inline six cylinder turbocharged with 395 horsepower, 405 pound feet of torque paired to an eight speed automatic transmission. When you're optioning this opposed to the standard P250, your zero to 60 is almost two seconds faster at 5.1 seconds, achieving 19 MPGs for the city and 25 MPGs for the highway, 22 inch wheels, multi-spoke in the setup for your suspension. It's a double wishbone front with gas pressurized shock absorbers. The rear is a multi-link with coil springs, gloss black elements, and the two-tone for the roof. It keeps the attributes of a Range Rover. Deployable handles, which keep the aerodynamics and the sleek style, again, minimalistic. That's what Range Rover is doing for their car. A simple look. They continue that onto the rear with the reworked LED taillights. You get the gloss black around it. Range Rover badging is going to be in the center and the lower is not going to receive any exhaust outlets. I used to like the SVR because you would get over 500 horsepower in which they had the exhaust that was exposed, but towing would not be as much as this at over 5,500 pounds. But they will give you that lower roof spoiler. It's gonna have the same style as the SVR with the shark fin antenna. Going to comparable rivals, it's really hard to say against a Ford Bronco because you could do some off-road maneuverabilities with this because this is more luxurious than that. And if you're going to compare it to Audi, BMW, or Mercedes-Benz, you would have to spend a significant amount of money to get or to capture some of the same luxury amenities that you get with the Velar. Power liftgate. Open up this privacy cover. And this is what's nice about Range Rover. You get a little gift, which is your mug and a keychain. Some bag holders here on the side. 12 volt, same thing on that side. Underneath the floor is gonna get your spare tire and a storage nook here. Split fold the rear bench. If you're tall like me, you can do it in the back. If not, you'll have to go through the back doors in order to do it. The seats are a little heavy. Flip it down and that's gonna increase your cargo to 70 cubic feet because this is a traditional SUV you're not losing too much headroom and another nice thing that Land Rover does is they give you this little lip here so if you have a bottle and it's gonna roll it'll catch it doesn't go right out of the car so I like that they keep that to make it easy and you can see getting in wise isn't very difficult because it's more flush with the cargo let's go inside and start up this P400 so you can hear that exhaust note Sixteen way power seat adjustment for the driver and passenger memory for the driver heated and ventilated Windsor leather in the ebony that is perforated headroom and leg room. The refresh starts off with a more minimalistic look. And what that means is you'll see it right here on the dashboard. The way it's laid out, it's nice and flat. We have the heads up display. We got the 11.4 Pivi Pro with Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, AM, FM, streaming Bluetooth audio. And with Range Rover, you have a lot of different settings here. And this is nice here for the vehicle dimensions because when you are raising or lowering the height, 
you can see everything in real time. You can change the cabin, interior lighting, flip it to reverse, and we have a reverse camera with trajectory in the front and the rear. So it does make it easy for your reversing. The nice thing also about this model opposed to the prior is before we would have two screens. So you'd have your one and one here for your climate control, which we do not have that now. You have your wireless charging pad, USB in an area for the key fob. And you have the wood inlays that's gonna be around the palm holder for the shifter. This is going to be more sporty. It does slide up, so it'll keep that minimalistic look. And you can slide it back, opens up as a two tier with USB and it's pretty deep storage pocket. The steering wheel is a leather wrap, three spoke multi-function and multi-functionality, which means when you click that, you can change different settings on that digital gauge cluster. So if you want to change the display layout, just simply click onto it. This is the two dial, one dial with the navigation, click back, and you can also change and configure each of those layouts. So if you don't want the navigation, you can simply change it but I kind of like the navigation the way it is. There is no pass through, which I would like to see that a large panel moonroof that goes to the back seats with the auto dimming rear view mirror and the door panels and the dash can figure into each other. Again, keeping a more simplified look. That's what Range Rover is doing. 400 watts with the Meridian sound system, one touch up and down for the windows, you get the wood inlays. Armrest is going to be more sporty and a medium sized storage pocket. Headroom for the back and leg room. We have the cool climate pack, which will add the heated rear seats, air vents, 12 volt USB, storage behind both of the front seats. And there's a connector here that you can inter exchange so you can hang up your clothing. Armrest with cup holders. The nice thing in the back is you have two way power seat adjustment. It doesn't necessarily go far back, but it's enough to make it more of a relaxed drive on that long journey. And the door is going to be the same materials found in the front and about the same size storage pocket. The floor is not completely flat. Slide over and the rails are pushed back a little bit too far. So you're gonna be sharing some feet space. Button and shoulder space also, but this is a more sporty SUV. Headroom though is still doable for somebody over six foot tall. 395 horsepower, 405 pound feet of torque with the P400, which is the best blend of performance. Right now I have it in comfort because I'm just driving through the parking lot. We have the terrain response with different driving modes. We have the adaptive suspension and that's also going to make the ride a lot more smooth and a lot more sporty too, all in the same. So we just put it into dynamics. Oh yeah, she's, she's good. The headrests are nice and comfortable because your head will go back in them when you push it. With these big wheels, I mean, you feel some of the bumps, don't get me wrong, but it is smooth. I mean, optioning the air suspension, if you go into the P250, I would consider it, but then you also have to consider the price that you're at. Would you do a P250 or just go and get the HSE Dynamic and get everything that you need? That's going to be more towards the 90 grand price in which it's gonna take me to some pros and cons. Starting with the pros, they did a good job with the refresh, keeping a minimalistic look and simplifying everything on top of that. The only con that I would see right off the bat is you have to use everything through the infotainment screen, which is a little learning curve as a new buyer and you will be taking your eyes off the road in order to see what you're doing but once you get the hang of it it's pretty simple and everything's right there if you want to do the climate control you just click it on the fly if the response is good it doesn't really lag i wish that they did add a pass through another pro is the back seats have the power seat adjustment optioning the climate package you'll get the heated rear seats you will have to option packages in which is a con because when you get into the hsc i would like to see a lot of those standard Look at this thing for some maneuverability. The steering, it's not heavy. So daily use ticks the box. You're not gonna really hear too much of the exhaust unless you're really getting on it, but you will hear some of the road noise. And if you're wondering what the lines are on the windscreen or windshield, it's a heated windshield. Turn radius at a stop point. 
not bad, about three lanes, let's rock and roll. And here's where you want to get the P400 opposed to P250 because almost two seconds quicker, which I don't mind the 250, but it can be it can be sluggish at times. You're not going to have that here. I wish that the armrests were a little bit more soft. I do like that you can adjust them back and forward for the center area because if you're shorter, you wouldn't even have armrest. Heads up display, you can see it with or without polarized glasses. But the big problem that I have with Range Rovers is they like to do dark colors. It's ebony over ebony. And when you're trying to do contrast stitching, it's dark over dark. I would like to see a little bit more lived up colors. And the only other issue that I have is the blind spots. This A pillar is very chunky in which if you're in a parking garage or you're just trying to kind of do any maneuverabilities, this can be a bit of a blind spot in which it should be a little bit smaller. I understand they're trying to make it more aggressive looking. However, it's still a family vehicle. You're not taking this on the track. You will take it off road because you can ford through water. I just don't see a lot of people doing that when they're spending nearly $90,000. As for comparable rivals, taking it to the Germans, they're not going to be as off roadsy as this. Luxury, I think Land Rover has really stepped up their game quite a bit, especially with this curved screen because it just shows you the more unique touch that they're doing. The palm rest holder for the gear lever, that was derived out of Jaguar a few years back, but it all kind of fits where it needs to for you to have a more relaxed and refined drive. And when you're optioning this P400, you will feel all of those refinements. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Check out the next video, merchandise website and Instagram. Leave a comment and a like. And I'd like to thank Land Rover Tampa for giving us this Range Rover Velar HSE for our car review.